Hi, I'm Randy George with the Neil Morris Band. And this is my Spectre NSJ H5. It's a 1999 model, and it's quite rare. Uh, there wasn't a lot made that year, but uh, there was something particularly unique about this when I played it, both that it was comfortable to play and the tone just really stood out. It was exactly what I was looking for. Uh, I got it in 2003 to play the first Testimony Tour with Neil. And I've been using it pretty much on every album ever since, with the exception of you know, a couple of places where, where I tried some different things. But for some strange reason, this bass works best in the Neil Morris Band music. The strings that I use on this bass are DR high beams. Uh, I use the 45 through 125. There is something about the DRs that synergize with this bass. Last summer we were on tour, I'm sorry, let me correct. It was in the summer of 2015 when we were on tour in Scandinavia. And uh, I didn't bring enough strings and I ran out. And of course, these you just can't go out and buy these there. For some strange reason, they just, they're not available. So I tried a number of different strings and nothing came close. And it's always been that way with this bass. So the DR high beams are the uh, primary strings that I use. They have just the right tone and it's just a synergy with this bass. The bass has uh, EMG pickups, a jazz bass and a, and a humbucker, or a soap bar as they call it. And basically it's wired in such a fashion that I have a separate volume for each uh, pickup and a push-pull pot so that I can coil tap the humbucker. So I usually leave it in humbucker mode and then I roll it off a little bit. And then I basically I have a bass and a treble control uh, for tone. But it is active because it does have a 9 volt and uh, I have an OBP1 uh, which is made by Aguilar. It's a little preamp that it's inside of it. For amplification, I've been using the Ampeg SVT4 Pro. Uh, let's see, eight, uh, the eight by 10 cabinet. This is the amp I've been using for the last, oh, I'd say uh, three or four years. Uh, Dave LaRue turned me on to these and I've been using them ever since. Uh, I have a couple different cabinet configurations at home, but when I'm on tour, it's always the eight by 10, just because it's one piece and it's easier for the crew to load and to move. There's just something about the Ampeg sound, again, that really just gives me that spongy, crunchy, you know, tone that I like. Okay, this is basically uh, the pedal board that I'm using right now. It's, uh, I had it custom made. And primarily, the tone comes from the Sans Amp, which is the uh, deluxe version, so I can save several presets. And that gives me the more crunchy, driving tone that is predominantly used throughout the album. Occasionally, I switch over to a clean tone for certain songs, in which case I'm using this Boss FBM-1, which is a Fender Super Basement of 1959 uh, modeling pedal. So it has a really nice, clean, punchy tone to it. And I just use an MXR line boost to give it a little more volume out to match more of the output of the Sans amp so they're a little more even. I'll also use that for fretless and so forth. Um, as far as effects go, I have a TC Electronics Vortex flanger, which I use for all my flange and chorusing effects. Um, and in some songs like Back to the City, there's this heavy uh, tremolo sound, and that comes from the TC Electronics tremolo here, in conjunction with the Red Ripper, which is providing the uh, fuzz and the distortion. I have a second Red Ripper for a slightly less distorted sound, just a little bit of a boost and a little bit of crunch, but I got tired of trying to bend down and change the knob every time I needed it to be different, so I just put two pedals and it made it easier. And then basically uh, everything is brought into the Boss ES8. The Boss ES8 switcher is really great because it has eight loops, so basically all the pedals are on all the time, and I can program the combination of events and program them in any order that I'd like and put them on a button. So instead of having to click three pedals and then shut them off and click two other ones, if I want to switch to a different combination of effects, I just have them all on a button. So it makes it very simple. And then I just take it out of here and the crybaby is the last thing in the chain. And then it goes to front of house from there. This other setup that I have here, you'll see this lighted foot switch down here and this module that's sitting on a, uh, a clamped on music stand. 
This module is the Moog Minotaur and it provides the bass pedal sounds, the Taurus pedal sounds. And it's basically the Taurus tone generators in a desktop module. And then I control that through USB MIDI from this Keith McMillan 12 step MIDI controller. Far, far easier to travel with than a real set of pedals, even with MIDI controller pedals. Because um, this weighs about a pound. <laughs> and it fits into a laptop case, that's the beauty of it. And it's completely programmable, because all our stuff's down a half step. A lot of mini pedal controllers, so you can't do that. You have to be able to tune the module down a half step. And that doesn't really do that, except for manually, which means I need a tuner in line. So, it's nice that I have the programmability for the 12 step. It's just laid out like bass pedals, but it makes for a far more economical way to do the same thing, and it sounds great. If there was one defining pedal that I would say provides most of the tone that you hear me use, uh, it's going to be the Sans Amp preamp. It's just got the right, just the right EQ curve and the right amount of punch and crunch, and uh, it's it's just always worked really well for me. The Spectre, the DR strings, and the Sans Amp, those three things come together in a very unique way. And I've, I've been trying to do this with other basses. Now, I, I use that Sans Amp with a Rickenbacker to do Chris Squire sounds, and it does that very well. I know exactly how to make that work. So the Sans Amp's very good for any number of applications, but there's something about the Spectre bass and the Sans Amp sound together, particularly with the DR strings on it, that give me that particular tone that you hear on Neil Moore's band albums. Thanks for checking out my gear. You can find out more about me at www.randygeorgemusic.net. As well, you can find our tour dates for the Neil Morris Band on neilmorrisband.com slash live. And we hope to see you out there.